Hello, Mike. There you are. Hello. Okay. And there you are. Excellent. Wonderful. Okay, I have Meralda here, so um, I'll put Meralda at the helm, and I'll, set, I'll step aside. That's wonderful, and I want to thank you for yesterday. We had a wonderful talk with you, and it was great seeing everybody on Pitcairn. Yeah, that was great too. I think it was pretty successful. Everybody yeah. had fun yesterday too, and it was very much enjoyable. So I'll turn this over to Meralda, and uh, she can take it from there. Great, thank you. Uh, hi, hi Meralda. Hi, how are you, Meralda? It's great to see you. Uh, great to see you too. We've we've uh, got quite a few people here today, and good to see you all there in the background. Wonderful, because we we want to see you all, and we want to talk to you all, and we've got a lot of uh, interesting questions for you. Okay. Um, first of all, I hope you're having as nice a day on Pitcairn as we are here in Angwin. We're having a gorgeous day, the sun is shining, it's clear <coughs> skies, it's beautiful. And how are you doing there? It, uh, it's beautiful here, every day is a, a beautiful day here. And um, we're just adjusting the, the screen here, Barbara. It, it's a beautiful day and um, there's quite a few folks here in the, the hall today. Um, some are pretty keen to see you all, um, and especially you, David. Um, quite, quite a few <laughs> people. Um, that adds you in the front, you all see him. And, um, and you all there. And I would like to say thank you to you and Ted, Barbara, for hosting this um, conference and um, also to Herb Ford as well, and the many helpers. I would also like to thank the uh, Pitcairn delegates for coming all the way from Pitcairn to there and being amongst you folks, and also for the Pitcairn Islanders who are living there in the States and who have come from afar to be here. And also I would like to thank all you bounty buffs <laughs> and um, without you and your enthusiasm for Pitkin, um, you have put us Hitia or Reva Reva, Fenua Maitai, named Pitkin's Island, on the map, and it's a glowing beacon here in the Pacific. Thank you all for making it possible and being um, truly a Pitkin buff. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Uh, Miranda, I have a few questions and then we're going to open it up and everybody is going to say hello. Um, uh, Peter Mulhausler, who is a specialist in Pitcairn language, uh, wants to know what the Pitcairn Islanders are doing to keep the Pitcairn language strong. Okay, and uh, hi to Pete. Um, I think he's there or he... He said he was going to be there. He's right there. And Peter, it if was you want to come over here for Meralda to see you better, how about that? There okay. you are. <laughs> Hi, Pete. And, and it's a pleasure um, being able to help out um, uh, with your recent book. And um, great to uh, be of some service there. Um, we try and talk Pitcairn as much as we could here. Um, we're also uh, talking Pitcairn. There's a culture class in school as well as uh, although the children sound as though they're, t they're speaking English all the time, um, when they choose to they can be as flat Pitcairn as we all are. And um, we're, we're trying to keep that going. Um, there is no definite written uh, Pitcairn language, but we all um, would uh, try and put down our words the way we try to be. And, and so uh, we're trying to keep it alive as much as we can. Wonderful. Now, you have lived on Norfolk and you've spent a lot of time there. Do you think that the Pitcairn descendants on Norfolk Island speak a different language? 
Um, they have their words. Uh, when we speak to each other, we speak uh, almost identically. Um, we uh, speak, they say, a little bit faster than we do. They have a lot of the old, old Pitcairn words. And because we live oceans apart or an ocean apart, uh, we have our saying and they have their saying. And um, actually together it blends into quite a, a, a good uh, language um, with the Norfolk language and the Pitcairn. So it, it's pretty good. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, Peter also wants to know if the parcel with the copies of Uckland's Nortke arrived. Um, Uckland's Norfolk Pete um, is uh, on the ship, I hope, touch fingers, and cross um, everything else, that it will be here on Thursday and we will be unloading the the supply ship then, and so I, I would send you an email to let you know uh, when it arrives. Um, it's a wonderful book. I've been able to read a copy of it, and it's a wonderful book. Well done, you. Wonderful. Okay, uh, this is just a message for you. It's hello and God bless to Mavis, Meralda, and Jay and family from Natasha and the Burkhoff family. The sailors. <laughs> there are the Burkhaws right there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And um, we see you there. And um, thank you very much. And I uh, hope you can come home again um, soon. Uh, with the proximity of French Polynesia to Pitcairn, does anyone speak French on the island? Um, there, there's a few who are trying. Um, there, there is a, um, the governor's rep and, and her partner um, who are here. They're, they're teaching French classes. Uh, there, there's a few who can muddle along with a few words. Um, um, some can speak a little bit of uh, Tahitian mix with French with um, Pitcairn. So it's a new language being born. Um, so <laughs> That's we for you, Peter. Try to do a little bit. Great. Um, do, since we're using Skype, tell me, do many people on the island use Skype? Uh, not as much as before, because um, for us, uh, using Skype, um, it really bites into our um, internet uh, cost. And although it's nice to see friends and family uh, through Skype, um, um, and it, it's a good high when you're on there. Um, when you get landed with the bill, it's um, a little bit uh, off-putting. So um, some do try and Skype for a few minutes, but uh, quite often we avoid it a little bit these days. Okay, and so you are charged even if you do Skype to Skype? See, if we do a oh, Skype yeah. account to another Skype account, uh, we're not charged. Skype doesn't hit us up for it. If we call a landline, yes, we do get charged. But yours is not? Um, no, no. We, we have uh, um, internet um, that when you uh, connect to there and the lights start wiggling, you're paying for that. Even if you get through, if your emails don't um, uh, go into the sent box, you still get charged for that. Oh, okay, that hurts. Are there any limits to how many people can use the internet at one time? Um, we haven't been too bad with it after they upgraded it um, in uh, June. Um, but at times uh, it, it gets to the stage when you go on and um, sometimes it can be for several hours before anything um, leaves your computer and a few bucks later um, you just have to try again. I see. It's uh, one thing living on Pitcairn, Barbara, that um, you learn to be patient. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, speaking of Pitcairn and Meralda, uh, some of your lovely 
little tapas have been sold and the people are very excited about owning them. Uh, some by the school children and some by you. So, there, see them? <laughs> Now, uh, Roo -roo, Tony, thank you. <laughs> oh, we can always depend on Tony. Uh, Meralda, can you identify who's in the room with you there? Can you tell us um, who's there with you? In the room with you I, there, so because we, we're we're seeing them, but um, okay, tell us who's directly there. Behind me, directly behind me is uh, Reynold and um, Nola, and. Um, and um, Nola's in there, Royal, okay. and um, Daphne um, is over there, and um, I just have to get in the, in the, behind, right behind me, um, and Nola, it's um, Carol and Jürgen, and um, Charlene is sneaking up out, out, out the back. Okay. And, uh, Say hello, sister. Then, <laughs> then, then we have um, Dave and Paul and um, Keen and and um, we got Sue there. We got um, Thomas and Michelle. Um, Sean is hiding in the doorway. Um, we got Lee. Ariel, uh, Mike, we got Betty, we got Dylan, um, of course we got um, Uncle Len in the front. I don't know whether I should mention him several times. Um, we we got um, Suzanne. Um, David, I'll see you. Okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we also have my. As a disconnect. No, we okay. see you and we hear you. Okay, we have Cookie there, and um, behind Cookie we got my mom, Mavis, and Suzanne. Who more to forget? Yes, <laughs> there. I thought. Yeah, yeah. I think I got them all there, Barbara. Good. Thank you. Yes, we wanted uh, wanted to know who we're talking to, and one big wave, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have a question about the school system. Is the school system on Pickern based on the British or the New Zealand curriculum? It's um, based on the New Zealand curriculum, and uh, we have a school teacher or two school teachers up from New Zealand who will be leaving us at the end of the year. I see. And uh, the question here is who funds higher education for Pitcairn students studying in New Zealand or elsewhere overseas? But I believe Jackie answered that for us uh, this morning and told us that uh, you're only funded through high school and then you're on your own. Is that, uh, that's true, so, right? Um, I guess so. Uh, the children there is um, funded um, through uh, DFID, not Yeah. Um, through uh, DFID at the moment. Uh, Ralph Warren Pugh is at school in uh, Longburn College at the moment, and at the end of the year, um, his brother Jaden, um, he will be joining him to start next year's um, school. Wonderful. Now, another question, completely different. Do you see many dolphins and or whales around Pitcairn or the other islands when you're out uh, in long boats? Yeah, we do. Just before I jump to that question of whales and dolphins, um, uh, we have our own nurse, um, Darlin um, Griffith, um, and she's uh, she's been away, uh, and she's our own nurse now. She's a registered nurse, so uh, 
they also helped uh, <coughs> the schooling there. And um, I guess uh, anyone else who wished to further education. So th that's great. Um, okay, to it answer is. your question, at the moment we've got some whales off the island and um, I hardly go fishing anymore, Barbara, I get too seasick, but um, I live in the wrong place to get seasick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dolphins um, have, have been sighted off Pitcairn as well. Uh-huh. Do you know what kind of whales? Are they humpbacks or sperm whales or killer whales? Well, the kids always educate me if I see a whale, and uh, I say, oh, it's just a whale, and sometimes they would say, oh, yeah, it's a humpback, and um, sometimes they, they say it's a sperm whale, and and um, things like that, and um, I think there's uh, several different species that have been found off the island. Okay. Now, I just got an anonymous question. It says, where get, where get rid of trash? Oh, but we get rid of our rubbish. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Where get rid of trash? <laughs> That's the burnables. We we have a copper system um, where we heat our water um, so that we can have hot running water through the the homes. The burnables go under the copper. The um, the tins and other things that couldn't break down that easily. We have an area out of Wale that um, the, the people have uh, dug a hole and uh, the trash is buried in there. Um, it's burnt as well to help the breakdown of that. And so does say we size away our rubbish. Um, a lot of the, the trimmings and stuff like that, that goes back to composting. I see. Okay. Uh, I know that you have a wonderful honey industry. Could you please explain to us uh, how it came about, how you collect the honey, and how you market it? Uh, we have um, a, a company that's called Pitco which is the, the Pitcairn Island Producers Cooperative. Um, we have uh, 16 members in, in that uh, company. And um, we get our orders mainly through mail order, and that is processed every mail out. Um, and uh, we also, in our um, Pipco company, we, um, we have a propolis tincture that is um, exported as well in, in very small quantities, as well as uh, honey soap. Um, a lot of people here has, has also got their own label. Not all the beekeepers are um, with this uh, little company called Pipco, but um, when, when it comes to when we need to export our honey in through this um, company, um, there's a group of us who, um, who runs this uh, little company and it, the orders are called for and uh, we come down in the square together and package and process that. So thank you all for ordering our products. Now, do you have a whole... Uh a whole quantity being picked up on Thursday by the supply ship to be shipped uh, out? It, it, will be, it will be just um, the mail closes for this um, ship on the 11th of September. So prior to that, um, I think the order is about 200 jars going pretty much worldwide. And... Um, there's um, quite a few uh, propolis tinctures that being sold, and um, also honey soap. And um, Pipco has also got a a Facebook page um, under Pitcairn Island Pure Honey, 
as well as uh, you can visit on the um, government website and, and that helps um, um, with getting in touch. But just about uh, most families here um, are in the honey industry. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a message to Carol Warren. Eric says hello. Uh, he was there in 1990. <coughs> Excuse me. And also Trish McLeod says hello. So, uh, Eric, you want to wave? There he goes. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Another question about people calling at Pitcairn Island. Uh, do naval vessels, both British, American, or otherwise, call or anchor off Pitcairn? Um, we haven't seen a British naval ship here for many, many years. Well, we haven't seen a naval ship off from Pitcairn for many years. Um, not, not very many of those ships call these days, and... Um, the, the majority of the ships that we get is uh, Claymore 2, um, our supply ship. I see. Okay. Well, and, uh, it's Barbara, a good... It's excuse a good, me, just, just yeah. to acknowledge um, um, that uh, from Trish McLeod and from Eric, um, um, we say hi. Um, Char uh, Charlene and Darylin are in the audience. Um, Carol and Jay are in New Zealand um, and will be home uh, in another couple of weeks' time. Oh, okay. Well, then he's going to have to Skype them in person. <laughs> okay. Um, well, what you said about the naval vessels, well, you were hoping that that would be the case in 1790. Uh, so I guess it's a good thing that they don't find their way there. And uh, it's a good thing that there was an American whaling vessel that made its way there. Uh, I'm sure Betty is delighted that one made their way there. Of course, there she is. Betty, aren't you, you're descended from an American whaler, aren't you? Betty, where's my dear Betty? Yes. Yes. Hi. <laughs> OK, you know, when we spoke last week, Meralda, um, I asked you about a typical day on Pitcairn, and I was absolutely fascinated by what you said. It was just so full of interesting information, just a lot of person to person, a lot of things that those of us who are here in cities don't experience. So could you please tell everybody assembled here what your typical day is on Pitcairn? Um. In fact, you can combine a couple of different days. <laughs> well, let, let's start. Um, some, sometimes Barbara and, and folks who are um, watching me, um, uh, I do things differently from other people. So uh, uh, I know I do it totally different from my mom. She's always up at the crack of dawn almost, and um, I pull the covers of my head when I hear her cracking a boat. Um, <laughs> but um, it, it depends on what, what's really going on on that day. But um, I, I do love my coffee and I, I enjoy um, having a good cup. And um, whilst I'm doing that, sometimes I check my email. But if um, my natural dryer, which is the sun, is on, um, and the weather is fine. I make sure that I have my trays of um, dried fruit uh, ready and up in the sun drying. And then sometimes it's uh, three times a week uh, to the store um, and it opens at 8.30 in the morning and uh, make sure we get over there and um, get our stuff. And then um, sometimes it's up to the gardens and um, make sure that's, that's what we're doing. Um, but uh, typically, too, uh, if it's a Friday, um, I'm researching and um, getting ready for school. And uh, I, I go out there at about quarter past ten. And uh, I'm with the children for at least an hour and a half uh, to two hours. And uh, we talk about pick and do pick and things and sing about pick and as well. So that, and then um, 
uh, of course, uh, uh, making things uh, to eat or making things uh, to uh, sell or or for uh, mail order or up um, tending the bees or, or whatever or giving a hand wherever we could uh, to uh, uh, friends and family who need it. And uh, one of the coolest thing is um, spending time with the kids and um, actually listening to what they have to say. Yes, we can learn from them, can't we? Uh, I have more hellos. This first one is hello to Tom and Betty, Irma and Dennis, Reynolds and Nola, from David to Marison from San Diego. David, stand up and we'll take your picture. Well, there you go. Okay. You know, David is, a for David is a former president of the Pitkin Island Study Group and a great aficionado of, of Pitcairn. Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> and another hello. <clears throat> Mary Crowley, Nancy Drew, and Alice Cochran say special hotel, one more time, say special hellos to Nola, Reynold, and Meralda and all their friends on Pitcairn. So thank you, ladies. Ladies, why don't you stand up so they see you? Okay? Yes. Special hellos. Hi, you all. Mary Crowley. Mary and them. And Alice Cochran. Mary Crowley, yeah. <laughs> and of course, it's thanks to Mary that a lot of people get to Pitcairn. She has, uh, for years, she's been the conduit that uh, people have to get there by all sorts of seafaring ways. So thank you, Mary. Paul, we have instructions for you. Keep my oh, bike running. That? I will need it again soon. Who do you think sent that, Paul? Paul, I see you back there. Come on. Who do you think sent that note? Keep my bike running. I will need it soon. Tony. He's <laughs> Tony said he needs the bike running. Uh, hang on, he didn't hear you. We will look after the bike here, Tony. We'll be waiting for you. <laughs> Tony, are you all right? No, he's not. He's not responding. Um, on the wall and back, could you please explain to us what some of the plaques and carvings are? They look so interesting. Um, but, <laughs> but behind Dam's white head, um, that's a, a plaque of Norfolk down at Kingston. Um, just above that, there's, there's a, a cut out map of uh, Norfolk Island, a kawata black and on top. There's a bounty um, missing a sail there. <laughs> um, the Paul Gauguin uh, from one of the French naval vessel, that plaque. Um, there's heaps of them about there, um, Barbara. Um, it's all around, we're, we're surrounded by that. And uh, in front of us, um, if I turn the camera on that, you'll get startled with all the technology that's um, in front of the Queen and the Duke. Um, uh -huh. And there's, there's even a cricket bat signed um, on the wall as well. So By whom? A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff from the Pacific Swift, um, the Esmeralda, quite a few um, ships that are no longer here, um, flags and, um, and, and stuff like that. Now, have certain ships um, had a plaque made uh, for their maiden call at Pitcairn? Some of them have. Uh, some of them have. And um, quite a few of the cruise ships that come uh, would pre present a, a plaque as well. I see. 
Uh, are those ancient Polynesian tikis on the wall above the door behind you, right back there? Um, yes, they are. Um, they're from Rapa Nui, from Easter Island. Oh, okay. So they were not found on Pitcairn. No. Okay. Um, as you know, I collect Pitcairn carvings, and I have a question about that. Uh, when do people find the time to carve? Uh, how do they do it? Do they sit on the porches in the front of their homes? Um, what's, the, what's the whole procedure? You know, I know the finished product, but I don't know how they do it, and uh, I'd love to know. You guys want to answer that? Yeah. Well, that's all the time. Yeah. You got nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's, um, it's something that we try and make time to do, uh, Barbara. Um, when, when the real need calls these days, um, then, then folks will go. Um, um, Uncle Lynn, who's uh, there in the front, um, he's carving every day. Um, we can hear his tools going and, and uh, he's carving every day. Um, a, a lot of the ladies are doing their weavings or, or other um, crafts as well. And um, the main carving season is um, from December onwards, but the majority of the time it's uh, when the um, just before the mail, if, if somebody wants things made especially for them and it's put out on mail order. Oh, I see. All right, so it's custom order. And uh, do you sort of um, crank it up when you know that the cruise ship season is starting so you have more goods to sell? Do, is there um, more yes, carving going do. on then? Um, yes, we do, because it's coming into summer. And the gardens don't grow that well at that time due to maybe short of water or or um, of the heat, and and so it's it's a good time to concentrate on our crafts. Okay. Uh, has any Pitcairn Islander that you know of ever been in the Olympics? Not yet. <laughs> Uh, not yet, um, not, not here, um, however I think there is an Norfolk Islander, um, I'm not sure of his name, um, that was in this last one, um, or um, part of him, well part of his bloodline is, is um, a Pitcairn bloodline, um, but not yet, we've been close, but not yet. Okay, keep on trying, practice makes perfect. Uh, what kind of contact and communication do you have with the bounty descendants on Norfolk? Um, lots. Uh, well, I do. Um, there's quite a few here who do. I know Nola and Reynolds do. Um, who more? Um, there, there's quite a few who are in contact um, with uh, Norfolk. Um, Steve and Olive, their family are. Um, um, yeah, we, we try and keep in touch quite often. Okay. Are there frequent visits back and forth with the, um, the people on Norfolk? Uh, not anymore. Uh, there's been a couple of pilgrimage, pilgr I can't even speak now. Uh, the first was here when uh, I wasn't in uh, 1984 and uh, and again in 1990 um, but it's just too costly um, it's too costly a turnaround for for them to come this far and um, back again I see now your necklace is lovely now you're out of camera range now but um, your your necklace is lovely what material is it um, it is a green stone uh, um, from a, a tunnel in Dunedin. Um, it's not a Pitcairn one, it's a New Zealand one. 
I see. And here's another request. Could Dylan please stand up? Alice Cochran would Dylan. like to see how old he is now. And she believes he was a, the one-year-old baby in her late husband Ted's film, Island of the Bounty. Okay, where are you, Dylan? Um, the, this Dylan uh, is only one year old. Well, it's not the oh, same one, Alice. <laughs> uh, this, this Dylan is two years old. And, um, yeah, this is uh, Tom and Betty's uh, grandson, Darlene's um, little boy. Yes, we know they're on island now. Okay, so uh, the Dylan who was one year old in 1980, well, we know he's 32 years old now, so uh, we're 33 years old, but he's not there. <laughs> uh, wrong name, Barbara. Um, what car, who's it? What, Alice? Okay. All right. In the film, Island of the Bounty, there was a baby in the infirmary, and uh, Alice thought his name was Dylan. That's Timmy, Timmy Young. Oh, okay. That's Corey's um, son. Uh-huh. Where, where his um, toe, um, yeah, Alice talked to Corey, um, and um, she'll, she'll show you photos of, of her son. Oh, that's nice, very nice. Well, we have a request of you. Uh, Herb Ford requests that you and anyone who wants to join you sing about three phrases of Ship of Fame for us. Can you do that? We, we actually, um, we plan... <laughs> <laughs> we, we plan to sing um, that we're from Pitcairn Island, but um, I guess we can try and sing the Ship of Fame uh, for you. I actually bought my guitar. I don't know whether you guys want us to sing with it or without yes, it. Yes, with it and all of you, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, well you can do We're From Pitcairn, and then you can do Ship of Fame. How's that? I'm sorry, I missed that one. Okay, perhaps you can do We're From Pitcairn and then Ship of Fame. And only about, you know, three, the... um, three stanzas of it would be nice. Okay. okay. Um, there's no cats there to run away, is there? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can only but try, so just give us a, a, a second. Sure. You want it now? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Is it all right with you all? What did you say? Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, what do you want to go for? Triple fair? Barbara, it's Mike here. And, Hi, uh, Mike. Just while we're up setting up. Um, I see that Dave Evans is sitting in the back there now. He's trying to hide. I know he is. I saw him yesterday. He's trying there to hide. There he is. He so, there he is. Now, I think we might be able to fit in an extra verse if Dave Evans and the Pitcairn group comes up front again and sing another song. And I, I see he's hesitant there. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, gang, you're, you're in demand. You've got to sing with your, your, with your relatives. Cookie, tell her Christine Jones' son. Um, a, a request from Dave Brown. He says he would like to see. Uh, oh, it was a Chris from Charlene, Christine Johnson. If you can stand up, please. Right there. Hi. <laughs> I'll just see you stand up there and I'll put this. So you're not there. I'm sitting there. Huh? Hi, Chris. Yeah, I'm sitting there. Yeah. 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 Um, could Steve Pendleton stand up? I think Reynolds wants to have a look at his... There he is. He gave a wonderful talk about <laughs> Pit Karn this morning. I suspect that Steve is um, Reynolds and Nola's adopted son. <laughs> 
guitar. Okay, Meralda, how about the guitar? Do you, okay, do you have, if you have the guitar, let's do Ship of Fame uh, for about three stanzas. Uh, there it is. We'll go, um, what ship is this? What wages and then hoist the sails? Yeah. Well, done now. And it's, 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 it's too high or too low, I can't help it. But you'd be on your own. You'd be on your own. Right. <laughs> what ship is this you're saying? I will bet you if there were a ship docked right out here in the Pacific Ocean, we'd all go right over and get on it and come to Pitcairn to see you. <laughs> what do you say, folks? <laughs> okay, why don't we close with your singing to us, We Are Pitcairn. This one, the uh, lyrics were written by Melba there and uh, passed the web to uh, Royal Telephone. We come to Kern Island, welcome you today, we're glad you come to see us, but soon you'll sail away, we hope you will remember the love we try to show. Hey!
Thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been a wonderful visit, and we want you to know we love you, we miss you, and your thoughts are, we're in your thoughts, you're in our thoughts. What a wonderful conversation. We will be in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much, uh, Barbara, and to all of you there. Thank you. May God be with you. And thanks for looking after Pitcairn. Uh, we love you all, and uh, you'll be in our prayers. Thank you very much. Uh, go Pitcairn. <laughs> go Pitcairn. <laughs>